Cat food can alcohol stoves, like this one here, are very lightweight, very easy to use, very simple to make, and they're cost effective. I'll use this type of stove for many of my three season trips, and there are many benefits to this type of stove, such as the stove itself weighs three tenths of an ounce. Also, there are no parts to clog or fail when I'm out in the field. And cost under $5 to make something like this. There's also a lot of versatility with the type of fuel that you can use. So you can use denatured alcohol, such as this right here. You can also use gas line antifreeze, like heat in a yellow bottle. But that has a strong dose of methanol, so you want to make sure that you're not breathing that in as much. And you can also use paint thinner. Uh, so you can find fuel for this type of stove pretty much anywhere. And the other thing I like is if I'm on shorter trips, I can carry just the right amount of fuel that I need without having to overdo it and carry extra weight. And I figure the fuel uses about 7 tenths of an ounce per meal. Now there are some drawbacks to this type of stove also. You need a windscreen in order to keep this thing burning. If the wind came through, it would most likely blow the flame out in this stove. Also, there's no simmer control or on or off valve. So, once you put your fuel in here and you light it, you have to wait until the fuel is burned out. You don't have any control with that for cooking, and it is a little bit slower than most of your isobutane propane canister stoves. A lot of those will boil a cup of water or a liter of water in about two and a half to three minutes, where this stove takes about six minutes to, to get that cup boiling. So what I'll do is I'll light my fuel and within that six minutes that it takes to boil that cup of water, I'll get my camp set up for the night. That way, when the water is all boiled, I can just add it and have a satisfying meal before I go to bed. In this video, I'm going to share with you the tips and tools for making your own cat food can alcohol stove, as well as showing you this stove in action. These items here, are all that you'll need to make your own cat food can stove. An empty cat food can, a hole punch, and a sharpie. So the first thing you'll need is going to be a cat food can. Similar to this, nice and small. You could also go with a larger can or a tuna can, but these are going to be a little bulkier. Also, your holes are going to be a lot closer to the base of the stove, so it's more likely that your fuel will pour out of those holes. So I find this smaller can to work just right, and it's also a little more compact and a little bit lighter in weight. Now the first thing you want to do is empty your cat food can. And after you do that, what I like to do is I'll rinse this can out with some hot water and then you want to remove this label. Now once you get your label cleared from the can, you want to try to get the adhesive off as much as possible and the extra paper. Then, what you have inside after you've opened the can and cleaned it is a very rough edge all the way around this can. Using your first aid kit while you're out on the trail is something that you want to avoid at all costs. So in order to assure yourself that you're not going to cut yourself on the stove, you want to smooth those edges out. So you can use a pair of pliers, anything really that's solid, and run it along this edge so you can flatten it and smooth it out. I'll just use my hole punch to do that. And I'll just run it right around just like this as I press down. So it ends up looking like that. 
Next, I'll take my Sharpie and I'm going to make 16 tick marks along the top of this can. When you're making these, you want them to be as evenly spaced as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If you do want it as close as perfect as possible, you can't always use a measuring tape and measure around the top of the can. So before we make these tally marks, basically what you're going to want to end up with are 16 holes evenly spaced out in a row right under the lip of this can and then another set of holes, 16 holes, right underneath that row. So let's start our marks. I'll do one, and then I'll go directly across that, and I'll do two. With my imaginary line connecting the two, I'll rotate this halfway, and I'll do that again. So now I have quarters. Then I'll rotate that slightly again, and I'll split those quarters into halves. So then I have eighths. And then one last time, I'll split those eighths into halves. and I'll get my sixteenths. So I'll have sixteen marks on the top of that can. And that's all I use the Sharpie for. You don't need to use one, but I find that it helps give you a little bit of guidance. Next is your hole punch. Now this one is just a couple of dollars at a regular grocery store, but you could buy an industrial size one, which will give you a little bit more length and a little more durability, but I find this to work just well. With a lot of the industrial ones, your hole punch is going to go all the way down to the bottom of the can most likely, uh, but with this one, it gets down just far enough to give me that second row of holes, so I didn't find it necessary to go with something bigger. So what I'll do next is I will line my hole punch with one of the Sharpie marks on the top of the can, just like this, and I will make sure that my hole punch is just below the lip of the can, like that. And then we get punching. I'll continue to do this until all 16 are punctured through the top of this can. I'm going to do this and then I'll be right back for the second row. All right, so I've got my first row of holes here, about 16 of them, and you want them at least an eighth of an inch apart, so pretty equal, as equal as possible. Um, the reason you don't want these holes too close together is because when you put your pot on top of the stove, if they're really close to each other, you could compromise the stove, the stove could collapse, could crack, uh, and then you're going to have all of your water in your pot spilling over and uh, just a big mess. So you wanna make sure that they're as evenly spaced out as possible and then you start your second row. And so your second row is going to go directly underneath the first row, uh, but you, then you wanna offset it. And you wanna do 16 holes for that as well. So once I do one, just like this, and I'll do one more, like that. It's 
gonna end up looking like that. All right, I'm going to finish the second row of 16 and I'll be right back. Whew. Are you still with me after all that hole punching? If you are, congratulations. You have made your very first cat food can alcohol stove. This is what it should look like once you have all of those holes punched. And now we get to the fun part. All right, so for those of you who follow me online, you've read the blog uh, that I posted recently on my three season gear list. This is going to be my cook set that I will have, uh, which includes the stove that we just made. If you haven't read the blog post yet, I do have the link down at the bottom in the info on this video. So please feel free to visit that and check out everything else that I like to carry with me. So, this will be my cook pot. This is the only pot that I'll use for cooking, drinking in, uh, and also boiling water. So I've got my spoon. Shaved down just so it can fit in this cook pot. And this is a titanium cook pot. My windscreen. As I mentioned, this stove is going to be very difficult to stay ignited if you don't have one of these. I'll just make one simply out of aluminum foil. And once it breaks down eventually, you can just make another one. And I've got my alcohol stove. I've got my fuel. This is a eight ounce pull and spring water bottle that I was able to squeeze down a little bit without compromising the bottle itself and carry just the right amount of fuel that I need for a specific trip. And here I have denatured alcohol. I actually have this stuff in that bottle. And then my pot. And lastly, this is important, I'll go with matches. And the reason I will go with matches is because when you put your fuel in here, and you go to light your stove, if you have a lighter or a flint or steel, chances are you might actually end up burning your fingertips. So to avoid that, I will bring a book of matches, I'll light my match, I'll set it away from the stove, so when the flame touches the fuel, it ignites, and my fingertips are nice and safe. Always use a base for your alcohol stove because there is no canister or anything underneath your uh, your stove to block the heat from coming in contact with the ground. Uh, chances are you could end up having this melt to any type of plastic uh, or it could end up singeing the, the grass or the, the dirt that's beneath you. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have a nice flat platform and something that it can sit on where it's not going to end up compromising the area that you're cooking in uh, or the stove itself. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll set my stove down on top of that platform. So we'll get the stove going in just a moment. But, so what I'll do then I'll take my windscreen and I'll set this around my pot. So it'll end up looking like that. You want it about a half an inch away from the pot itself. And notice how I also have a little bit of space from the top of the pot and the top of my windscreen. 
I find that half an inch completely around spaced away from my pot will contain as much heat as possible to evenly distribute it through my cooking pot and also prevent my stove from burning out. Now let's get this thing started. I'll pour my fuel in. Let it go for 15 to 20 seconds. Get some heat going. And then I'll sit this right on top. Wrap that windscreen around, even though it's not really necessary indoors, just so you can kind of get an idea. Now, if you're wondering how it looks inside, And that is it. Stove is out. So that is how you can make your own alcohol burning stove under $5. It's very easy and fun to make. You'll have fuel pretty much anywhere you go. Uh, gas stations, convenience stores, grocery stores, hardware stores, anything that's close by. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions on this stove or other stoves, please feel free to send a comment below or reach out to me via email. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions and also let me know what you think of this video. Thanks for the support and I'll see you soon.